Okay, so what we this is our start, right? This is our start. We got uh, 23 and a half across on the floor, and we figured 14, which would give us a little extra space to drape it across the top and have a little space on the bottom for some bricks so we can make sure we hold it. And we're all good. So I see a piece going completely across that whole thing. Okay. I'm going to take up as much space as possible. I don't like to leave white okay. canvas. Okay. <laughs> Man, if there's space to paint, I'm going to paint. Wow, Tim, there it is. Nice. He's with me. You guys are together? You're married, yeah. Man. Are you kidding me? 23 and a half by 14. Yeah, we have an 84 inch roll by, and sold by the linear yard. The paint of all paints. Let me just show you. What's the difference? It's more durable for outside? Or more? It's uh, just a better quality of paint. The monochromatic pieces are really cool, you know, if you're going from like a lighter shade of purple all the way to dark or the blues or the greens. Just can't beat this. The uh, color I know is black, it's always going to make something kind of stand out the most, but then it'll come with a double outline like this one's in the turquoise. Tough clothing all the way. It's the only way I roll, man. Tell your friends in Knoxville. <laughs> the largest roll I have is seven feet. So if you did 14, you're gonna have a seam. A seam. Yep. How am I gonna seam this together? How am I gonna put it together? The difference between an unprimed and a prime canvas is this already has a good base on it. So when you go ahead and put spray paint or acrylic or whatever on top of it, it stands out a lot more than an unprimed. Take it raw and we'll seam it together and uh, get it ready for the large size that it's gonna be. Fat. You're picking tips? Picking tips to define the width of the spray. Ultra fat, which is key for fill in. All the negative space on the inside. Um, outliners for doing the outline. And we got ultra skinnies for doing any kind of really detailed stuff. So those are like your brushes? These are like my brushes. Yeah. Do you, do you use one of those like like a handle or a, a trigger or something on those things? Never a trigger, always my finger. Um, the trigger doesn't give you the same control. I hold my airbrush and you use the same trigger finger on your airbrush as you do with the spray can. It's a strong finger right here, man. So as you can see, I'm going to do uh, in the graffiti world what we call throw up letters. Um, they're like fancy bubble letters with a little graffiti style and they'll be very readable to um, the outside world of graffiti. You know, I can uh, I can double side it put one top to bottom or put the whole word the words right beside each other. And I'm thinking of, uh, you know, since we're in Music City, when I do this, <coughs> dropping a little uh, skyline here in the background. Draping that on both, both sides of this logo here. Maybe do some bigger ones up there. And you know we can't forget the uh, Batman building. You know, we'll have the little thing there. And uh, just to give you a rough idea of um, the direction we're going in for this, and we're going to use some pretty... Your uh, uh, iTunes card? I do have my iTunes can, card. Can, can, you, can you show, because I think people are going to be so surprised, everybody who watches this, are you going to go, oh, wow. I've 
spent a lot of years in Los Angeles doing television and film, and uh -huh. this is one of my claims to fame uh -huh. right here. Uh, I auditioned for the iTunes campaign, the iPod campaign, and booked it. And this is uh, my iTunes card, and I also had different billboard billboard ads around the world. And uh, this is still going. I had a friend just buy one a couple weeks ago for Christmas holidays at Walgreens. So the twenty-five dollar card. That's right. <laughs> this is me. And these are the dreads. They're a little longer now, but I did this back in two thousand four, and very proud of it. That is. Looking back, looking at all those iPods right there, all those campaigns are still there. There's that one. I'm trying to find a big one. And we'll hang the canvas right off of it. It's probably going to put it off the ground a good bit more than it would be at the uh, studio. That'll keep it taut, straight, and uh, shouldn't be any problems whatsoever. Well, it's actually 125 years old, and it's the old Newhoff packaging plant. My grandfather was a shoemaker in Italy, and we are reviving his brand, uh, Peter Nappy Boots and Bags. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you're so tough. Kelly, that's Troy. Troy, meet Kelly. Hey, Kelly. I um, that I left a note on the door, but the cameras should be here today. There's both of them. We having fun yet? That's right, man. We got that done. I and mean, this is on the road to dry. Let's go over to the to the warehouse so you can see the site and see if we can get in there so you can try to take a look. All right. Canvas about that high. Oh, geez. so when I do my when I start my letters. I need to be more on the ground because the lift is only about this wide. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like this, and it's a little easier to have it low. But if we stretch it around, because the most important part is actually, you figure there's only going to be one artist at a time, right? A little shake. But I have the lone artiste. We'll be in, I think, uh, Troy's going to be here about 10 tomorrow. Is that right, David? That's what he said, yeah. And, um, so I'll be here about 9. Okay. We'll get here.